Hello everybody, welcome and welcome back. I am Chris the Girl and um, it's my YouTube anniversary today. Two years of doing the YouTubes. I can't believe it has been that long and yet I can't believe it's been that short if that makes any sense at all. I thought today, since it is the two year anniversary of the YouTubes, I thought uh, we would kind of just sit down do a little chit chat here. I know that I have quite a few new subscribers, a few people here uh, that are a part of the channel that maybe don't know that much about me. Um, maybe you just started watching me a few months ago um, or whatever the case may be. Maybe you've missed some episodes or whatever it is. Um, I thought maybe we would just kind of talk about, I would just sort of introduce myself, if you will, um, and just kind of do a, do a little chit chat here. Also, um, I'm going to do a little plant tour here for you as well. We'll just get started on all this right now. Fun fact, my very, 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 very first video that I filmed was a plant tour. It was a plant tour of my, um, my apartment that I was living at at the time in Pennsylvania. And I filmed it all on my, on my phone and I edited everything and put it all together and then I never published it. I never put it on the YouTubes. The whole thing was just an experiment. It was just um, me trying to see like if I can actually do this, like how I feel comfortable. It was just, it was like a practice session basically. Um, so that's a, that, that is technically the first video that I've ever filmed is a plant tour of my apartment. Um, so I don't know, I thought maybe I would just, I thought it'd be kind of like a fun, like full circle sort of thing for my, for, for every, for nobody except for myself, a fun full circle thing, um, for just thinking about my, my roots and like how, how all of this kind of technically really started. So anyway, we'll just dive right on into it. So for all of you who don't know, I'm Chris the girl. <laughs> My name is Chris, and actually, since we're doing kind of a about me sort of thing, here's a fun fact that I have never said on my YouTube channel to date. My actual, my real name is Christina. My full name is Christina. The way that I came up with my name, Chris the Girl, uh, honestly was just sort of by happenstance. You know, a, a lot of my best ideas, and I know a lot of people out there are the same way, a lot we get our best ideas when we're in the shower or we're like halfway asleep or whatever it is. And for me, I was, I was in the shower, I was thinking about you possible YouTube names, and it just kind of, it just kind of popped in my head. Kiss the girl, Chris the girl, so I was like, whoa, hold on a second, that's not a bad, name. So I checked on YouTube, I checked on Instagram, it wasn't taken, so bam, there you go. Chris the Girl is born. Not a very exciting story, but uh, in case you were curious, that's sort of where that came from. Creating my YouTube channel has been a very, very long time in the making. Um, it's something that I've thought about for a while. It's something that people have suggest suggested that I do for a while. Um, specifically with like either plant stuff or with Disney stuff. Because those are kind of the two things that I know a decent amount about. And it's not anything that I really took seriously, mostly because I wasn't living in Florida. I wasn't living near a Disney park and I knew if I wanted to do Disney vlogs, I wanted to actually be inside of the park, not sitting in front of a camera like I'm doing right now, just blabbering away about something. Um, so it wasn't really anything that I deeply considered. Uh, and then, I don't know, it just kind of... I guess I started discovering more and more people on YouTube maybe about, I don't know, about four years ago or so, about the time that COVID was really ramping up. We were all staying home, looking for entertainment and such. And I, I always had a vision in my brain that to be a YouTuber, you had to have the best equipment, the best editing software. You know, you had to be an expert on absolutely everything. And I was just thinking like I had to be perfection and I knew that that was not ever anything that I was going to achieve. 
And then I saw, I hope no one takes this the wrong way, but then I saw people, I discovered people on YouTube who were not perfect, who did not have the best camera equipment um, or the fanciest items or whatever. They were just simply, they just simply had a camera and they were just filming themselves on their everyday lives, basically. And it was fascinating to me, fascinating to me. And I, I, I just, I love the concept of it. And I thought at that point, well, maybe this is something that I could do because I feel like there, at the time I felt like there wasn't a lot of videos out there, a lot of channels that had my interests and my, I don't know what the right word is, but um, I didn't feel like I heard my voice on YouTube. You know, I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. I I like going to theme parks, but I don't ride rides. I don't need to hear about the latest roller coaster or the latest meat items being served here and there and etc. I, I just wanted, I wanted to see other things. Um, I wanted to see my interests being showcased on YouTube. Um, so it kind of just cataclysmic did, did me into <laughs> into starting my own channel. So I knew when I began my channel that I wanted to, I knew I wanted to focus on theme parks. I wanted to focus on plants. I wanted to do a lot of botanical tours and plant projects, stuff like that. I knew I wanted to focus on Halloween as well. I knew I wanted to do a Halloween shopping thing and decor and all of that stuff. Um, at the time that I started my channel, it was mid-October, so Halloween was basically out the door at that point, so I didn't get started on that until last year. Uh, but if you go all way, way, way back, now over 300 videos ago, um, you'll see. Like, I, I went to Knoebels, I went to Hershey Park, because I was living at Pennsylvania at the time. Um, I did a lot of botanical tours. The first YouTube video that I ever did was going to Hershey Gardens, or the first video I ever published, I should say, uh, was taking a tour of Hershey Gardens. Um, and yeah, just, just a bunch of, um, bunch of stuff like that. I knew I wanted to do travel videos and I had, I had a lot of plans. I had a lot of plans for my channel. I also thought that I would do uh, more food things at the time. I had this whole vision in my brain that I would do a series of videos where I would go to restaurants or theme parks or whatever and see if they had anything for me to eat, see if they had anything for vegetarians to eat. I don't know, it sounded good at the time, but here we are. Um, and then I discovered that making food videos, like restaurant review videos and stuff like that is actually really dang hard, like a lot harder than you think it would be. So that idea really didn't go anywhere. So I, I was having a really, really good time with it. It got me out the door. <laughs> it got me to experience things that I maybe wouldn't have had the motivation to go experience. And that is definitely one of my most favorite things about having a YouTube channel is it really gives me an excuse to get out the door. Because I am an introvert. I, I am a home buddy. I like being home and comfy and cozy and not going anywhere and not worrying about that and not driving and not worrying about people and all of, this, all of the things that are outside of my front doors. I had to be very, very careful with it because I could easily just stay inside of my house, especially because I work from home, um, and just never leave. I, I could never leave, especially if I love my home, which I do now. So I, I have to actually really be careful with it because I don't want to get to that point of, I just don't leave and I don't go out and I, I don't experience things and whatnot. Like for example, the other day when I had to leave to go to St. Augustine to do all of that stuff, um, I was nervous about it. I was kind of regretting the, de the decision that I, that I made. I was like, man, I, I would just kind of give anything to just be home and just to stay home and just be comfy and not do anything. But, um, you know, I, I, I try to fight that as, as not as, not a ton because I do know that rest and relaxation and stuff like that is very important. 
Um, but I don't want to be a homebody. I want to go out and I want to experience the world and I want to do this. So having a YouTube channel has really helped me with that a lot. And I'm very, very grateful for that. It's one of my favorite things about, it, it truly is one of my favorite things about having a channel. Um, and then, yeah, very shortly after that, I met Tampa J. I'm not going to go into how all of that came about because we both did uh, entire uh, entire videos devoted on how we met and how our relationship blossomed. Um, I'll actually go ahead and put the link to that in the description below if you're curious because uh, we went over the entire story of that and it's quite a story so I'm not going to really like dive into it too much but meeting Jay really changed my life in so many different ways and um, just speaking purely YouTube wise it, uh, it really helped me grow. It helped my, my channel grow um, because he had quite a bigger channel than I did. So that allowed a lot of people to, uh, to find me and to, to, to find the channel and, and subscribe if they wanted to and watch the videos, uh, to which I am very, very grateful for. I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. Um, and yeah, then very shortly after that, moved to Florida and just kind of went about my life doing the YouTube stuff. It's been, it's been a lot of fun, a heck of a lot of fun. And YouTube has, this channel has provided me with just countless amounts of opportunities and, um, you know, meeting new people, making new friends, and just, it's been, it's been, it's been one of the best things that has ever happened to me in my life. It's not a Chris the Girl vlog if I don't cry. It has been a blessing on my life. It really has been. Um, listen, when you have a channel and you work at it as hard as I do, because this is literally like, it takes my entire life. Um, for a lot of you who don't know, I have a full-time job. I have a real nine to five full-time job that has nothing to do with this nothing to do with this. It's very boring and plain and not exciting. Um, so I have that. <laughs> and then I have this, my, my YouTube channel, which I do consider a job. I don't think that that's a bad word in any way, shape or form. Um, I think jobs can be fun. And um, I call it a job because I take it incredibly seriously. I work very, very hard on my YouTube channel and basically every ounce of free time that I have is essentially devoted to my channel. You know, some days there, there are times where, and this goes for Jay as well. Jay times two, by the way, he's the hardest worker out there. Like the hardest worker I've ever met in my life. There are days when I get up for work, I work my job, the second it's over, we're out the door, we're, we're driving to somewhere to film, we film, we come home, we edit the video, go to sleep, that's it. There's no time for anything else. Sometimes there's not even time to eat food. Um, it's just one of, it, that. that's how hard we work at it. And then on top of that, you have to factor in the, you know, there's all the social media stuff that we do, promoting the videos, obviously, you know, responding to comments when we can and, and responding to people on social media. And then of course, having lives, <laughs> spending time with family and friends and, and all of that stuff too. So it's, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of nights um, where you don't sleep a lot of times when you don't have a second to breathe. And then of course, there's always going to be negative people out there too, because it's the internet and that's how these things go. And this year in particular, you know, I've had to learn a lot of really, really hard lessons. Um, 
in terms of like trusting people and who you can let into your life and all of that stuff. So it's not all rosy rainbows, butterflies and sunshine. I definitely don't want to put that false image out there for you because it's a lot of hard work if you if you take it seriously like I do. But it's also because of all of that, plus all of the good stuff that makes it so rewarding and amazing. I really didn't have too much of a life in my opinion before I started YouTube. I wasn't really going down a path that I liked very much. Um, I wasn't with somebody that I liked. I wasn't, I felt very lonely. I felt very um, stifled, I guess, creatively and just in general, like I felt, I felt like I didn't really have a voice. I felt like I, I don't know. I just, I wasn't very, very happy with my life in, in a lot of ways. And it wasn't until I started YouTube and I, I started this whole journey that I just, I opened up. Like it was just, it was a door swung wide open for me and I ran through it. Um, it's a, it's a really, beautiful thing when you find something that you love to do and you feel like you're made to do it. And I do feel like this is something that I was made to do. And, um, I, it's just amazing. Like I, I couldn't ask for anything better in my wildest dreams. I, I couldn't ask for anything better. And it's hard, you know, again, it's hard sometimes because you look at your numbers, you look at your analytics and, you can get so discouraged so quickly and you just, you know, there's days when you just want to give up. You're just done. Like, it's just, it's too much, et cetera, et cetera. Like, it's just, it's a ton of stuff. It's a ton of stuff. It's, it's, it's hard. It's really, really hard. But the benefits for me have outweighed all of the negative stuff so much. And um, I'm just really grateful. And that's a, a huge reason why I wanted to do this particular video and just sit here and, and talk about this because I wanna put it out into the universe and I wanna put it out to all of you because I don't say it enough um, how much I, I love this channel, I love what I do, I love making videos, I love editing them, um, I love finding new things to do, I love thinking of new ways to make it entertaining and fun for everybody. I love showcasing uh, local events that deserve it. I love supporting businesses. The best part about this, hands down for me, is, and I, I mentioned this in a video I did a few a few videos back when I did my Spookala haul. Um, the best part for me is being able to help people. And if my videos can put a smile on your face, if they can help you through a bad day or a bad time, um, if I could be a part of your life and that's helpful to you, there's nothing better. There is absolutely nothing better in the world. Anyway, I hope that that doesn't sound like I am, you know, tooting my own horn or ringing my own bell or whatever, because that's, that's definitely not what I <laughs> I mean to do by any of this. Um, I just want to make sure that you all know how much I appreciate you so much, so 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 much. Again, I said this in the in that Spookala video, but I will say it again. I'm gonna try to say it more and more often. I promise. Um, I don't have a channel if I don't have you all. I don't have a channel if you don't watch the videos, if you don't want to be a part of it. Um, you know, I can sit here and make videos all day long, but at the end of the day, if no one's watching them, then it's like, I don't, I don't know. I, that's not the point of it to me. Um, so thank you all so much for being a part of the channel. I really, 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 really appreciate it so very, very much. Um, again, you all make, you all make the channel. You all, you all really, really do. And you make it worthwhile. And, um, I just appreciate you so much. So thank you again. Thank you again 
Thank you. That all being said, let's do a plant tour. I'm gonna, this won't be super, super in depth and um, also not like the prettiest thing in the entire world because I haven't, haven't pruned my plants in quite a while and uh, well, etc, etc. Like I said, I'm a busy gal. So um, yeah, I'll do my best. I'll do my best with the names as well and with showing you all the plants here. Starting behind me, we have my rubber tree plant. It is a type of ficus and this guy I have had for quite some time. Uh, I believe, yeah, I got him in Arizona and he was only like one little stalk and now he has like five different stalks. He is growing like crazy, which these plants tend to do. They, they do really well. It's a great, it's a great overall plant to have. So love this one, rubber tree plant. You can't go wrong. And on this little stool here, we have my, one of my many snake plants. There's actually several inside of this one planter here, which I think looks like a square Epcot. In fact, I think that's why Tampa J bought it for me initially. So yeah, uh, I did do a whole video on taking apart my snake plant that this one came from and like replanting all of the babies and all of that stuff. It's a whole thing. There's a playlist. You can watch them if you're interested in the plants, but uh, basically these already need to be cut apart and replanted because it's they they just grow like crazy. Another really great plant to have are snake plants. And I got my other rubber tree plant here. It's a it's a type of ficus, by the way, but um, this one is variegated as you can see. I forget. I think this is a ruby. You're gonna hear me say this a lot and I'll probably say a lot of wrong things because I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember names, but I'll try my best. But um, you can see like how pretty the leaves are on this one in particular. It looks like someone took like watercolors and painted on the leaves. That's why I love these so much, like so dang pretty. Definitely needs to be pruned. Just ignore that. These hanging plants in here, this one is a uh, wandering Jew plant. This one is actually my parents, but these ones are, are mine. So there's this one here, which I don't think I ever found out what kind of plant this is. If you all wanna tell me, if anybody knows, please let me know in the comment section below. I don't think I ever was able to find out what kind of plant this is. I think it's a type of succulent. I'm not really sure. Um, and then there's this, uh, this is a cactus, and I also don't remember the name. It's like a saw, sawgrass, saw something cactus. I should have looked up names before we did this. It's fine though, I'm basically just showing you plants. Um, but yeah, both of these are just uh, sitting in their little nursery pots here, unfortunately. Someday I will get them I will get them repotted, that's another project. Money tree plant is doing excellent, thankfully. I had a, this is the second money tree plant that I have ever owned. And uh, the first one I had, I got in Arizona. And let me tell you, these do not, they do not like the dry heat of Arizona. They like the humidity and getting a lot of water here in Florida. In fact, I can't even really keep up with the watering that this thing needs even here in Florida. So um, I'm very, very pleased that this guy is doing so well and growing so much. And not just because I want my plants to succeed, but because it's a feng shui plant. It's a great feng shui plant for your home, as the name implies, a money tree plant, great for, uh, for prosperity, for wealth. Work, dang you, work. Syndapsis pictus here that I picked up from Target. Not, sometime last year, picked it up from Target. It's doing pretty well, despite all these yellow and brown leaves. Just ignore, just ignore that. But uh, it's grown a ton. It used to be in this tiny little nursery plant and now it has its vines go all the way across my snake plant in here, so it's doing exceptionally 
well. I'm very pleased about that. And of course my Black Raven ZZ plant, Alanis Morissette, that's her name, it is Alanis Morissette. I thought that she could use a very rock star kind of name. So there you go. She's doing pretty good. She's doing pretty good. I think that she could do better, honestly, but I think she also really needs to be repotted. So that'll be a project uh, for another time. And we have a tetrasperma plant here. It has these really lovely leaves, little Swiss cheese leaves. Very fun plant. Another great one to have. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's another climbing plant. And you can tell because it has all these little little vines coming out of it. It has this one long tendril here and then the little, uh, not vines, but the roots, the aerial roots coming out of it. So if I gave it a nice moss pole, be able to climb up it, it would do a heck of a lot better than it even is now. But uh, that's another project for another time. I really want to make one. I want to make one. I don't want to just buy one. I want to make one. So we'll do that for a plant project sometime in the future. This is a type of peperomia that, <laughs> you guessed it, I don't remember what it's called. Um, I can't even remember where the heck I got it from, but it's very cool. has really neat little leaves in there. It's been doing pretty decently well. And I have my staghorn fern in here too which I don't, man, I, I think I got this one from Kirby Nursery as well, if I'm not mistaken. I actually put this one in the cauldron that we got from Michael's this year, and it, it's doing very, very well. A fun thing that you can do with staghorn ferns is, like, mount them on, like, a piece, piece of wood, uh, which is definitely something we'll do sometime. Not with this one. I want them to grow inside of the, the cauldron here, but um, that's some, that's another plant project we can do in the future for sure. Few plants down here. Some of these are ones that Tampa J got me for my birthday uh, last year. And once again, it's, it's uh, plants that I don't remember. If you all know, please let me know in the comments below. One of these is a silver sword. I know that. It's either this one or this one, but I seriously, I really don't remember which one it is. I, you know, honestly, it doesn't matter. They're plants, they're lovely. That's all that matters. This Beetlejuice plant here is a type of snake plant. And someday I gotta get them in a real <laughs> planter too. You can see the plant projects, they are, uh, they're just endless. But yeah, I really love this guy. I've had him since Arizona as well. So he's been with me for quite some time and uh, doing good. It's just really fun. Like I said, it's a, it's, it's, it reminds me of something from Beetlejuice. It's just so fun and pointy and weird. And then the one behind it is a type of uh, Dracania, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I used to knew, I used to know plant names. There's only so much my information, my brain can handle at one time. So plant stuff has been pushed out a little bit. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I got this one from a grocery store in Pennsylvania, Giant, right? Giant grocery store, the one with the robot. If you know, you know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I got them from a grocery store uh, from Pennsylvania and uh, yeah, still doing good. This peace lily down here is another plant that I've had for just the longest amount of time. It's one of my oldest plants of them all. Still alive, still kicking, no matter how much of a fuss she continues to give me. If, you, if you've had peace lilies in the past, then you know what I'm talking about. They're like the most dramatic dang plants. You forget to water it like one time and it just, it just Boop, droops all the way down. It's just so dramatic. Um, but I love peace lilies. This is another really great feng shui plant to have. Really beautiful, shiny, dark green leaves. And um, great for uh, clearing the air. You know, the, a lot, plants in general are great for having cleaner air in your, 
in your space and in your home. So this is this is a great one for that. Moving right along, and I'm kind of realizing too, there's a lot of plants. All right, there's a lot of plants. I'm not gonna show you every single one. I'll just do, we'll, let's just do some highlights here, okay? We'll just do some highlights. Um, there's two Birkins, two Birkins in here. This guy and this big planter, and then this one in here. This one Tampa J gave me for my birthday last year. This one I've had since Arizona, so I've had it for quite a while. Um, I've been a plant mom, a plant person since 2020, the COVID times. I know a lot of us out there discovered plants during that time, and um, I was one of them and uh, never looked back. So this is one of the ones that I've had uh, since Arizona, still doing very good. These are really cool plants. Look at the the striped leaves. And yes, there's a there's a weed growing in a there's weeds growing in a lot of my plants. I don't know how that happened. I've kind of just let them be because they're not. I don't think they're taken over my plants. I just figure whatever. It's another plant. Who cares? This behemoth here. <laughs> Look how big these dang leaves are on my philodendron pink princess. Yeah, this, uh, look, she is happy as a clam uh, here in Florida. She is just grown and grown and grown. And she has, she's, so this is a reverted philodendron pink princess. Um, so that is usually the pink princesses, they have these lovely variegated leaves with pink streaks in them, in them. They're quite lovely, really beautiful. They used to be super expensive for that reason, but now I think they're a little bit more accessible, a little bit cheaper. Um, but yeah, so this one's reverted, which means it, it no longer grows those lovely pink variegated leaves. I bought it that way. Um, and I love it. I think it's, a, it's, it's still a beautiful, beautiful plant. And occasionally it will grow those variegated leaves. And I suppose if I wanted to have it grow more of them, I would have to cut off all of these other leaves and let that one leaf continue to grow or whatever. I don't know. I think there's a process that you can, that you can do, but I, I don't do it. I think it's beautiful just how it is. So yeah, you can see this is all one plant. It has this one long vine here and it's this whole huge thing here. Again, this, it desperately needs a moss pole. It desperately needs a moss pole. Someday, I promise. Up top here is my Brazilian pothos plant, which also has very nice, lovely shaped and colored leaves. Lots of really long vines. I kind of like tangled it all up into some other plants down here. Again, growing like a weed. A lot of these plants just absolutely love it here in Florida. So that's been a lot of fun and grow natively here in Florida as well, especially the further south that you go. So it makes sense. My maiden hair fern down here is doing pretty good. It does get the crispy leaves every now and then, but all in all, it's, uh, it's doing okay. It's hanging in there. It's in this cute little cat planter that I got from Target. And that's really, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, I also have some air plants. These I've had since Arizona. Always fun to have. I love the air plants. This guy here, Philodendron Congo, is humongous. He definitely needs to be pruned. Got a lot of yellow leaves in here, but they're, yeah, very big leaves. He grows very well in general. Had this guy since Arizona as well. It's one of my favorites. And we have some more snake plants. We have this one here, which is a different kind. So this is a bird's nest snake plant. And then this one is like the long, kind of more traditional snake plant that one may think of if they know what snake plants are. This one is Tampa Jays. This one and this one I got from Home Depot, if I'm not mistaken last year and I got it for Tampa J. So this one and this one, uh, snake plants. And then, yeah, this one came from, again, <laughs> 
all of the other snake plants that we saw. If you want, if you want a lot of plants and you don't want to spend a lot of money, get you a snake plant because they propagate like crazy. And I have my dwarf philodendron here. There's another, another word in that name that is escaping me, but I love this plant. This is another one from Arizona, one that I've had for quite a while. And uh, it kind of, it comes and goes in terms of how fluffy and full it is. There's been times where it's like super fluffy and full and then times when it's like very, very scarce and I feel like my plant is clearly dying. Um, right now it seems to be doing pretty good though. I think it likes this particular spot on the porch. So that's good. I'll have to remember to keep him there. And then finally on these stretch of plants that I'll show you, I got my Monstera plant, of course. Again, got it that uh, nursery in St. Petersburg and it's doing okay. Not as good as I would like it to, but again, this is another one that just desperately needs that moss pole and it needs a bigger planter as well. So yeah, we got plant projects to do. And then I do have plants out front as well. Those are where my cacti are and some of my succulents. The plants that can basically handle the heat because that out front gets the most direct hottest heat out there. Uh, so I'll show you those another time. This, this video is going to be long enough. I didn't want it to be that long. Um, but you, you get the idea. I got a lot of plants. I like plants. We haven't done plant videos in a really, really long time on the channel. Uh, which sucks, but that's what Halloween brings. Um, so now that, you know, once Halloween is over and we've passed the holidays, the plant videos will come. Do not worry. I love my plants. I'm a huge, huge plant person, if you did not know. So we'll definitely be doing more of those. Alrighty, so now that we're back inside, um, I'll just go ahead and wrap this up. I wanted to leave it off here saying, once again, of course, thank you for being a part of the channel two years of YouTube, and we're gonna go on another year. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. We're, the channel is always gonna be growing and changing and evolving. I'm always gonna be trying new things. I'm always going to have my old standards of things that I wanna do. I'm excited to grow, I hope, knock on wood. I'm excited to grow and uh, to, see, to see what the future has. I know that I definitely want to, you know, I want to do more um, theme park videos, Disney stuff, especially like deep dives and history stuff, things like that. Uh, there's still a lot of places that I haven't showed you all that I used to live and work, like a ton of other states, but as well as, you know, places here in Florida too. So look out for those in the future as well. Um, I love to travel. I love to travel. You wouldn't know it from this year, but I do. Uh, so I really hope that next year we will be able to travel more. There are two places, three places that are tippity tops of my list. And I'm going to be very, very upset if we don't get there next year. Um, I'm not going to reveal where those places are yet because it's kind of a surprise, but I'm really hoping to do more travel next year. I really, really hope so. But yeah, so that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you for clicking on it. Thank you again for being a part of the channel. I really, surely do appreciate it. We got a lot of stuff coming up here, as I always say at the end of these things, because again, we're not stopping. We're keeping on, keeping on, no matter what. So we got we got a lot of stuff to do. We got a lot of stuff to see. Um, so once again, thanks for being a part of the channel and thanks for thanks for experiencing it all with me. I really appreciate it, everybody. I I really 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 do. Um, alrighty, happy Halloween, everyone. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye bye.